Once you have a cell that can make a small amount of a chemical, you need to optimize the production to achieve a high yielding strain to be commercially competitive. This scale-up problem is currently the bottleneck step in biosynthetic chemical production, and thus a common focus of research in synthetic biology and metabolic engineering. Device engineering is a two-step process. First we gather up all the genes needed to make the phenotype, then we optimize their expression. Some of these optimization steps involve finding genes that express well to produce high specific activity within the cell. However, much of this process is about optimizing flux from the starting chemical, which is usually glucose, to the product chemical by manipulating the expression of host genes. This problem has received extensive attention because it turns out to be difficult and expensive to perform. Though there have been many valiant efforts to do this computationally, in industry it is primarily a trial and error process that involves directed evolution-like strategies. Today we're going to go through the theory and experimental approaches to optimizing flux. Let's start with some basic definitions. The distinction between a molecule and a species is identical to that of instance and class in object-oriented programming. A molecule is an instance of a species. According to the interweb, a species is the ensemble of chemically identical molecular entities that can explore the same set of molecular energy levels on the time scale of the experiment. When we describe the graph that represents a chemical, we are describing the structure of a species. When we speak of individual condensed sets of atoms, we are referring to structures of atoms that are indistinguishable from all others represented by one species. Thus we can speak of the count of each species within the system. If we had these five molecules, then there are two GFPs and three 1-butanols. Their count divided by the volume of the container is the concentration of each species, and it is this value that is being operated upon in most kinetic models of the cell. You've learned from Michaelis Menten Kinetics that we can describe an enzymatic reaction in terms of an E plus S over to ES and an ES over to E plus P step. I have been drawing for you this ES to P step as two distinct ES to EP and EP over to E plus P steps in previous lectures because they are distinguishable in non-concerted microstates of the system. However, it is always possible to aggregate steps into a single one without loss of essential meaning, so they're really equivalent. If we represent the sequence of events this way, we can write a differential equation to describe each species concentration accounting for the reactions that take place. So there are four distinct species described in the diagram, E, S, E, S, and P. So we get four differential equations, and each one has a term associated with one of the arrows in the diagram. Now we are in the math domain where we can solve this system of differential equations. For very simple cases like michaelis menten and its variants, we can solve the system analytically with some simplifying assumptions. We can also solve such systems numerically with little computational difficulty. Suffice it to say, the mathematics for dealing with such systems is well established. Going from a single enzymatic reaction to a pathway only requires that we describe more species. For this three enzyme system, we'd end up with 10 equations. Each free substrate accounts for four species and four equations. Each free enzyme accounts for three equations and species and there are three complexes to be described for another three equations. When you solve these systems of differential equations, you end up with an energy landscape. In this diagram, the valleys represent energy wells corresponding to the stable molecules and complexes we typically observe. The peaks of the mountains represent the transition states between these stable states. They are the barriers that must be overcome to achieve interconversion between these states and thus define the rate at which material flows along this landscape. Imagine you took a table contoured with this shape and threw a million tiny balls onto it and shook it. Those balls would fall within local minima within the diagram, but random bouncing would sometimes make them leave these wells and travel to even lower energy level wells. If the overall landscape slopes to areas of much lower energy, those balls will naturally undergo their random series of bounces until they encounter that lowest energy state. Such is the same in metabolic engineering. 
glucose is entering the cell at a high energy state and the cell is migrating the atoms in those molecules to lower energy states. The magic of biology is that it is only the case that the net energy of the system must be negative and there are reactions coupled to other reactions such that you can force the accumulation of intermediates at the expense of the full degradation of other molecules to CO2 and water. Suppose you knew every reaction occurring within the cell. You knew the KCAD over KM for all enzymes involved and had measured some initial concentrations of each metabolite. You could write a large set of differential equations describing each metabolite as a DSDT equation that depended on the concentrations of each metabolite in which it interconverts with. And then you could solve the system of differential equations in the steady state or otherwise. However, there are several problems associated with doing this today. Basically, we have relatively sparse knowledge at the level of granularity needed to satisfy such models. First, KCATs and KMs are mostly unknown. Even substrate range is usually unknown for even well-studied enzymes. Also, post-translational control mechanisms are extensive in the cell, and the kinetics of post-translational mechanisms is usually unknown. We also have very little kinetic data about the full consort of translational and transcriptional processes in the cell and how they interact with the various control factors that respond to metabolites in the cell. Thus, it's not currently practical to model the cell at this level of detail. Instead, we must make simplifying assumptions.